some of the conveniences that we have had as America, we have taken advantage of, and now we're seeing some of our sustainable ways, some of our freedom, some of our liberties, slowly but surely being taken away. What are five ways that we can try to grasp a little bit more control of that, to understand a little bit more sustainability, and as a prepper and homesteader, do better with just common sense approach, being the America that we once were, having the freedoms, raising our families, loving our children, and being good to our spouses. Five things we should be doing to make this happen. This video is gonna be a good one. It starts right now. I met an old man. I said, tell me your story. I don't know if you can hear on this, this camera, just the birds, just the beauty of this morning. Look at that, look how gorgeous that is. Fog right there in the hollow, and all the cows are just grazing. The grass is starting to green up. I love early morning springtime. It's getting close, so, so, so close. It is right here at the 1st of March, so I'm glad about that. So guys, thank you so much for being here today. Welcome to the Max. If you're new to our channel, go down here, press subscribe, ring the bell, give us a thumbs up or down, but let us know what you think about this video. Your comments and your thumbs up helps us stay in the algorithm, and I think our information is good to help people see common sense approaches to sustainability, prepping, homesteading, and living a better life. So let's jump into this video. I think this is gonna be a good one. Five things we should see now that will help us have a grasp of control back in our lives and understand freedom and liberty and maybe kind of call out some of the deception that we're seeing in our world. If we don't take control of these five things, we're slowly and surely gonna lose everything that America's worked hard for the last few hundred years. So let's jump into this list. Number one and two are dealing with our broken food system. We have ventured our lives off farm and we've went for more convenient living, which is in cities and without growing food for ourselves. Uh, all the while, that's a great thing. I think it's wonderful to be able to devote, devote time more to our families, devote more time to our jobs. That's good. But when we lose the fact of our freedoms to be able to grow our own food, then we lose the fact of being in control of our food and the energy that we put in our body. So food is a key, key thing in our lives. Number one would be heirloom seeds and non-GMO grown vegetables. We're losing touch of the fact of what nature has given us. And heirloom seeds and understanding that we can grow food without all the chemicals is a big deal. We're slowly starting to see some of our heirloom seeds go away and we're starting to see more GMO modified seeds, more hybrid varieties, and all those things, again, I'm not saying are bad. If you think that that's okay to use, use it. But if we stick to that goal, then we're gonna lose the fact of regrowing our food from the food that we already are raising on farms day in and day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year. So if I grow a non-heirloom, a variety of any kind of crop, that means I automatically still have to go buy seeds for the next year. Even if you're not growing food right now, learn to invest in some heirloom seeds. We're seeing a lot of big business getting to farming. And when they get into farming, they, they learn to control the markets of what can be sold or can't be sold. They also learn what can be grown and what can't be grown. With all that we grow are processed GMO foods, then I think we're gonna see a lot of health repercussions for that. So number one, we have to control the food system. So I would challenge you, if you're not growing, try to grow and make sure you're trying to grow from heirloom seeds, organic or non-GMO seeds, and try to stay away from the hybrids or the GMO seeds as much as possible. There's some links to survival seeds and host tools below. Uh, I think those are great providers. We've been very successful with a lot of their seeds. Stick to the heirlooms, the non-GMO seeds. I think that that will benefit you. But if we don't see the fact of manipulating seed, then we don't see the fact of how our food grows. And if we don't understand where our food comes from, then we're gonna see more processed food, more modified food, which I think will be bad for our health. Now, number two goes along with that as well, is our meat sources. If we don't see the fact that our meat sources are slowly and surely going away, I think of the chicken and egg. We've had tons of videos on that. You see the war on eggs, how the price has been manipulated, it's been skyrocketed. We see the fact of the avian flu that's either killing all these birds or uh, a lot of people are killing all these birds in a proactive way to, um, not have the flu, I, I, again, I don't, I'm not trying to dive into that right now, but what I am saying is there's been a lot of chickens that have been slaughtered 
and we're losing that to go to market. Again, if you're not growing your own food, you depend on that chicken going to market. You depend on those eggs going to market. You depend on that farmer growing the beef to go to market so you can grill a hamburger on July 4th. You depend on that. I saw a study that showed that there will be a shortage of tinned fish. So like our tuna, our sardines, our mackerel, our salmon that's in the can, if you're used to eating that for a protein source, well guess what? It's in short supply and will be in short supply this year. Beef farmers are gonna have a worse year than they had in 2022. 2023 showed that fertilizers will not go down. The famine hurt the grasses for this last year and it's gonna put a lot of farmers in the bind. So you're gonna see a lot of small farmers that are growing beef get out of the industry. You've already seen that with the milk industry. So if we don't have our milk, we don't have our beef, we're struggling to get the tinned fish or the fish to the market, we're struggling to have the chicken and eggs, and then we see also with the war on, on pork, where do we think we're gonna get our meat source from? Again, because of convenience, we've moved off farm, we've lived in cities, again, nothing wrong with that, but we depend on the farmer, we depend on the stuff growing to get to market. So one thing we've gotta do is we've gotta see value in buying local. We have to see value from buying from the farmer. Uh, if you can find a local farmer that, or, or a local market, for instance, if you live in a big city and on Fridays they have a, a, a market that comes to town and they bring in all the vegetables and all the, uh, the beef providers and chicken providers or whatever it may be, you may need to go down there and support them. Uh, it's not that you're gonna be paying tons more, you may be buying a different version of it. You may be buying a, a better quality version. Not necessarily spending all your money on your food, but understanding that food is key to energy in our body, which will allow us to do all the things that we've been doing. If we wanna stay healthy and stay off all the antibiotics and all the chemicals and all the medicines, we've gotta get away from all this GMO processed grains and foods and get away from all this meat that's grown in uh, petri dishes and we've gotta go back to what God intended. Heirloom seeds growing, meat growing off farm and giving us food that is a full balanced diet. So, two things to do. Either grow your food like your vegetables. If you're not growing a lot of your own vegetables, at least buy the heirloom seeds to put as an investment to maybe help your neighbor or to be able to use as a bartering tool one day. Same way with protein sources. If you can't grow all your meat, stockpile some of the tin fish. You need to learn to buy from a farmer if you can. If not, start buying some meat, especially when it goes on sale at the grocery. If you find it, buy it, learn how to can, learn how to preserve it, learn how to put it up. Because I don't think we understand the value of what food really is to us because we have not seen the shortages that a lot of people see. If we all of a sudden start seeing that, uh, think of the chaos that we may have. Number one and two, food systems that are broke, this is how we can fix it. Number three is we have to learn to control our money. Uh, we are seeing the big push for digital currency. We're seeing the, uh, the big push away from cash. We're used to using our credit cards, our debit cards. Again, none of those things are bad. If you have a retirement, that's not bad. But again, because of those conveniences and not carrying cash or not carrying gold or not having uh, bartering assets, is we, we then become uh, part of the system. And when we become part of the system, if all of a sudden they change the system and they want to know more about you, they basically want to make an algorithm out of you, then they're knowing what you're buying. They, they're knowing everything that you're purchasing. They know everything about your finances. So if we keep all our money in the bank, if we keep all our money with using credit and debit cards, if we keep all our money in our retirements, then we're losing the fact of our freedom with our money. So what we have been doing, not that we don't have retirement, not that we don't keep some money in the bank, we have learned to say, okay, we have got to stockpile cash right now. And I know we have the biggest naysayers when it comes to cash, but if you don't at least keep some cash and try to do more with cash and be more decentralized and make those purchases with cash, then it's gonna go away. The more that Americans push against the fact that we don't want a digitized currency, the more we will go back to cash and start using cash more. When you say, well, I don't want a digitized currency, but all you're doing is using credit card and plastic all the time, you're not really helping the movement to stay decentralized. So look at crypto. Again, make sure you're, you are wise with that. But again, remember, it's based on a system of working such as the internet and also having capabilities to utilize a, a digital wallet that could still be very dangerous. So I'm going back to three main things when it comes to our money. We have to say, where is our money best spent and where do we have the most freedom? So the most freedom for us is 
cash. We like having cash so we can buy what we want without anyone else knowing it. It's between me and whomever I'm buying from. Not that it's bad or good, but it's no one else's business. It's my business. The more we do that, the more our cash is gonna be worth something. If we keep allowing cash to go away, then we're gonna be looking at centralized digital currency. Secondly is we love precious metals. I bought precious metals this week. I, I believe in precious metals because I, I, it's one of those things that's not making a lot of money. A lot of times people push against gold and silver and, and, and push against all these, these commodities or precious metals and they'll say, well, it's not making a lot of money. It didn't make money over 10 years. It's still the same value. N that's not necessarily a bad thing long as the value stayed and long as the value is holding then that's good because my retirements may have dropped in 08 09 and never come back or my retirements may have dropped the last two years because of the pandemic or whatever we've been going through so having a decentralized currency such as having cash still which is even though it's centralized even though it's owned by the government it allows us to transact without everyone's knowledge having precious metals even though we're not using that precious metals right now is a great bartering tool and also it helps hold assets and values we have a link to genesis gold you're welcome to look at them call them ask questions to them or look at any provider i, look, I still go to pawn shops and look for gold and silver you do you do need to know what you're looking for and make sure it's real and authentic but sometimes you can get great deals there. Now, other parts of precious metals is I look at brass, if you know what I mean. I look at self-defense tools. Just this week, I, I was purchasing precious metals such as gold and I was purchasing precious metals such as brass because we saw value in that iron and brass the same way we saw value in the cash and in the precious gold and silver. We have to find ways to decentralize our currency and to control our currency. Another option is start looking at real estate or land or a home. Right now is not the best time to buy some of those things, but if you come across a good deal or you can go into a piece of property with a family member or you can buy a piece of someone's property or you can look at some real estate options, that's not a bad investment. Control what your money is going to so you can barter it later you can utilize it later you can have it for a defense you can have it to transact because if you can control your food you can control your money you have a lot more freedom than a lot of other people have as someone who believes in homeschooling i mean i'm a threadbare believer of homeschooling and i believe everyone should homeschool but i know some people can't i understand that so when we look at our school system if we don't control our education system we are going to implode as a nation. Uh, we have gotten away from education actually teaching education. So our school systems are more indoctrinations versus education. And please, before you dog me out for that comment, I want you to understand what I'm saying. We, our kids need to learn math, language, reading, science, history. And of course, all the things that go along with that. We need to learn you know, how our government works. We need to learn the value of freedom and, and where we've come from. The bad things that we've done and the good things that we've done so that way it helps us make educated decisions as we go further. Well, if all of a sudden all we learn is all the bad that America's done, or all of a sudden we learn all the, the civic answers that we're dealing with now, all the populist answers, a moral or immoral, views or the right or the left views if we're learning only those things then we're missing out on truly what education is if you look at a lot of our cities we have a failing education system and no one's talking about it so if we don't start learning to control what our kids are being taught and we don't let our kids understand true education then we're raising a stupid lazy generation who thinks that the government is going to help them on everything and that we have to hate our neighbors. That is how America is being destroyed. Is we're turning people into a dumb serfdom to where we want to the infighting and the destabilization and we're not teaching education and how we can make better our, for ourselves and we can make better for our communities. We have to educate instead of indoctrinate. So if we don't take control of our school and city boards, and this is not a president or really even a Congress situation, this is your local cities and towns. You need to go and make sure that your local cities and towns are teaching quality education, quality. And what that means is my kids can pass these tests, my kids can learn how to spell, learn how to be a good citizen and learn how to grow and excel in this world that, that, that is growing, that needs more educated people and more workers in the workforce, especially as we get older. Last thing we've done really wrong that we need to take control of so we can be better 
and not lose our freedoms is this really hits more men i think than anything is we have to control our families we have to control our households we have to love our wives we have to love our spouses uh, ladies you have to love your husband uh, marriage is a working thing we need to understand that it's not always going to be cupcakes or rainbows so we have to work together so we have to control our money we have to we have to work together on a budget we have to learn to not spend we have to learn to go through a very crazy America right now that we have had tremendous stress and worry and anxiety and fear the last few years we have to be strong in that if our marriages are strong then our children's life and what we pour into them will be strong they'll see a structure that worked through the hard times got to the better times and saw fruition to hey we can do this as a family we can do this as a unit and so they'll grow up seeing a better education like we talked about but also seeing a family structure that can help them uh, see that they can work through problems and we'll do it together i think a lot of times we have destroyed our family and when we destroy our family all these other things are destroyed if you're in a single parent home you know you can't raise gardens or you can't have all this land to raise cows see if you have a broken home you can't homeschool because you have to go to work and pay for things see if you're struggling financially and you don't have a way to control your money then you don't have time to go to the school board and say hey this is what i want our kids to learn see it's all about the broken system of family the broken home so now our solution is we have to work at our marriages we have to go and say, okay, I want to be better. I want to, I want to put more time and more emphasis in my spouse, more time and more emphasis in my children. Another thing is we've lost morals and faith. So if we wrap all this back around to saying, okay, God ordained marriage, and as a Christian, we believe that. So we want to see our marriages better. So therefore, our children's lives will be better because we love them. We want to pour that into them and values and morals into them. Then they're going to a better education and they're getting fed good educations to strive and be better human beings to give more and help more and succeed in this nation then we see that they may can spend more time with their family they can spend more time maybe growing food they can spend more time learning good quality food versus bad quality food and spending more time around the dinner table and then being able to put money up and stockpile money up in a way that has freedom so really all this put together it comes back to we have to build our families. We have to fight for our families. We have to fight for our spouses and our children. And when that goes right, then all these other things will be better. I really believe that. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Give me your thoughts on this video. This is just my heart today. We have to understand there's value in the way we grow our food. There's value in the way we raise our families. There's value in the family. And there's value in the way we put our money up and have any assets that are more decentralized than centralized. Let me know your thoughts. These items if we do them right i promise you we will see a stronger america we'll see a more free america and we'll see families thriving and i don't think we'll see as much polarization as we are seeing today guys thank you so much for watching god bless you have a wonderful day this beautiful sun this beautiful grass i love seeing green grass spring is around the corner start growing something and be just a little bit better today than you were yesterday because i promise you you will impact people more than you know God bless. Happy Stop home today, looking for the answers and you'll find what you've got.